Are you ready to talk about citrus? We're gonna talk about pests, diseases, issues overall, and I'm gonna harvest. I'm pretty embarrassed actually, um, but I've been treating it and I wanna show you progress. I've got seven citrus trees. The one that I have the most issue with right now is my lemon tree. Let me show you. This is my Lisbon lemon tree. It does have thorns. It has been here since March of 2019. And currently it's lost a lot of its foliage. It's been like that. It did get attacked by a lot of leaf miner. And leaf miner is the larva of flies, beetles, moths, and they eat off of the sap of the leaves. And if you unfold some of the areas, you'll see it. If you find it, you can just pinch it with your nail and kill it. If not, like this one's an old one, um, it's just best to get rid of the area. It's very common on citrus. I've got it everywhere. I should have attended to this much early and I didn't. Remember I mentioned this book right here? I really recommend it but I'll link it below in case you're interested if you open some of these up you can see where we've got some heavy pest issues here another issue that I wanted to show you was this now this is from mealy bugs and they live underneath the leaves they secrete the sap out of the leaves and they create this honeydew and ants love honeydew so if you see ants get rid of the ants because they will protect the mealybugs i'm going to show you some right now this is my tangerine but let me show you what they look like they are white they have like a waxy substance they're sticky they also expose the foliage to mold so there are some areas that have like this black mold that's for the same reason i went ahead and i cleaned a lot of these off but this is mold for the same reason and you can just wipe it clean but don't let it get carried away like me <laughs> my tree is starting to bloom and i don't want to have a lot of this with all the blooms. Now I wanna make sure that this tree is successful this year. I'm gonna really care for it more than last year. And hopefully this doesn't happen as bad. The lemon has it a lot more than my lime tree. My lime tree really gave me a harvest a couple times in the year. And actually, if you look in, there's still some limes that I missed. There's one back there. Um, I really like this one. This is a Persian lime. Both of these trees were here at the same time. I purchased them from Costco and now is the time to go look for them. February, March, you will see them. I will link the company where they come from just in case you don't have a Costco. Maybe you can order from them. They are sort of local. They are from Texas and Louisiana. In case you're in the area, maybe you can purchase from them. The Lisbon lemon does have thorns. The Persian lime doesn't. So I have to really take care of the branches that are coming over too much. Even though I do like to kind of sneak in here, it kind of goes with the secret garden vibe. But the thorns do seem to hurt. We're gonna cut that so we can open up the pathway. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and harvest these. These mature quickly. Look how large this lemon is. Look at all my lemons. <laughs> I wanted to show you, we have the same rule with the fruit trees in the sense of you don't want branches that are gonna rub and cross. 
This one's just shooting straight up here, so we're gonna get rid of this entire branch there. That's all I'm gonna take off. That's already a lot, and we're still gonna have a couple of cold days, and I don't want to leave it too bare because it already doesn't have enough leaves or foliage. Um, one thing to know that when you have foliage that looks like this, it's lacking nutrients. Um, I did run a test on this and last year I didn't add the worm castings, the tea, and it was a huge difference. So this is what happens when you don't feed your trees. I did, did it often, but I didn't do it every month like I was doing it. It's also not a good idea to have competing plants. So this is a weed. I need to pull it off completely. I've been coming in here and taking it off, but still seems to want to come back. So I need to take it off better. Once the new foliage is completely out and insects can lay on them, um, it's time to add a preventative measure on there so we prevent some of that leaf miner again. And neem oil is a good option. The oil will drown them and you won't get these issues like this, or at least it's preventative so it won't be as bad. Now we're gonna move on to the lemon tree and this one already has quite a few lemons. And these are self-pollinating. They do not cross. I don't know if it's just these varieties, but I did look them up and these do not cross, even if they're just like this right next to each other. I didn't have no issues with the fruit. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna cut off all those top branches and probably just look in between to see if we need to attend to anything else. And there she is. Once it's done blooming, I will turn it because if you notice, there's no foliage on this side. <laughs> I did sacrifice a little bit of the fruit, but that's normal. We have to do that. None of this is good for your compost because there's so many bugs on them. You don't want to keep that. So unfortunately, I don't have room for it to go anywhere else other than the trash. Look how bad this one was. And it gets pretty bad if you don't find it soon. And I had a harvest. I didn't, whoops, sorry. They have, <laughs> they do have little thorns. I didn't notice I had these. So I missed those. I'll put them inside. And you see how the tree was having struggles? So you can see it on the fruit as well. But it's really only on the outer skin. It's not on the inside. This is my grapefruit, and I wanted to show you progress. Oh, she is starting to ripen, and we're getting some new foliage. So this is the time when we need to be cautious, and I wanted to show you another area of that mold. So all I did is with my gloves, just kind of rub them a little bit, and it just quickly comes off. It doesn't take much. And then you see how they become shiny and clean again, just with a little care. Same with the back of the leaves. So I came in, I already cleaned these, but you know, it just comes off. I've got two of my Hamlin sweet oranges that are getting soft. I think they're gonna be ripe soon. And I've got two blood oranges over here that are getting ready as well. And this is soft. So I've been checking them. I think they need to turn just a little bit more uh, deeper orange color. Like this is lighter here. And I think they'll be ready soon. Well, that's it. I wanted to show you my fails because I have them. I wanted to show you how I learn. I kind of just, you know, let things go so I can see the worst case scenario, which is this one. <laughs> I didn't have a large harvest compared to my Persian line, but I did learn a lot. Um, I know what I have to do. I have to really, really take care of my new foliage. If I do that, then the pest will be minimal and I don't have this issue. <laughs> If there's anything you take away from this video, take care of your ants. Please 
I had so many ants that I thought, ah, it's okay. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> Limit your ants because if not, it gets worse and worse and worse. Trust me, they love that honeydew. They do. <laughs> so get rid of them. I still have a great tree. If you're interested in how things are going on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm always on Instagram stories. I'm there a lot. I show the garden a lot. That is a great way to kind of keep up with what I'm doing. Here I can only post a little bit of videos because it just takes a lot more time to edit and all that good stuff. Um, so keep up with me there. Check out the website. I have links everywhere. I'm trying to help you as much as I can and stay tuned at your local garden centers, Costco, Sam's for citrus because you should be seeing it pretty soon. I hope you get what you want and stay in touch. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.